Today I'm with Dr. Lucy and she's gonna teach me how to relocate a shoulder because that's an injury that's quite common in our sports and it can be actually quite useful to know how to deal with it. So Lucy, we just did this amazing run but at the bottom I hit a rock and my shoulder is so painful. What do we do now? So first of all, just make sure that the scene is safe, that you're not in any falling rocks, there's no avalanche, uh, make sure that there's not other skiers and boarders coming past to upset you. Find a place to sit them down, uh, make sure that they're relaxed and make sure that you're comfortable in this position to, to relocate it. And then before you go straight to the shoulder, just make sure you're not missing anything. So make sure you've done your primary survey, your airway, breathing, circulation. They've watched your video, your how-to first aid video. Check it out. <laughs> so that you've, you've made sure that the casualty is otherwise okay and it's just a, a, a shoulder injury. Do you actually ride with uh, painkillers in your backpack? Yeah, I always ride with painkillers. And so simple things like paracetamol, ibuprofen. If you've done a first aid course, you might be able to have some Penthrox, which is fantastic. But that's on prescription and that needs professional That is on knowledge. prescription, but if you've done a course, you could be prescribed it for you, for your expedition. But just make sure you always ask the casualty if they've got any allergies and if they're happy to take the pain relief. And that's just check. What you want to do is have a look and think, well, is this a dislocated shoulder? So you want to look at them, see if they're probably going to be holding their shoulder in pain. If you can, you want to try and slide a hand just inside of the jacket. And if you slide it on the good side, you can feel that this shoulder has a nice rounded edge and you can feel a sort of a divot of skin just where the shoulder meets the chest. If you come over to this side, it'll be very tender. But as you slide your hand over the top of the shoulder, over the deltoid muscle, it'll feel very squared off. It'll feel like it kind of falls away. And you might even feel a lump just in the front aspect here of the chest where that humeral head of the shoulder has just moved forward and dislocated. If you ask the casualty to try and touch their other shoulder, they won't be able to do that. So, uh, just below your nice badge here, in fact it's called the auxiliary badge, you just want to say to them, give a little rub and say, can you feel me touching you there? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. So you know their nerves intact and then a few simple tests, just ask them to give you a thumbs up, they should be able to do that. Ask them to cross their fingers and then ask them to make a finger gun. And if they can do it's all fun. those things, their nerves are okay. Okay, good. All okay. Right. And if the nerve is not okay? Do you still do the... You should still try and relocate it, but just okay. make sure that you write down or document somewhere that they couldn't do or they couldn't feel it or they couldn't do those moves. Okay. So that they know that when they get to hospital, they know it was damaged in the injury. When you come to relocate the shoulder, again, just make sure the casualty's comfortable, you've given them some pain relief, their jacket's done up, they're nice and warm, and just explain what you're gonna do and that once it's back in, they're going to feel a lot more comfortable, okay? So then all you're going to do is take the arm, this bit takes quite a long time, and you're going to be really gentle. You, with the heel of your left hand, you're just going to hold the elbow in at their side, and then really, really gently, really gently, you're going to start moving their arm right out to the side. Now, they're going to get spasms of pain during this, so at some point, they're gonna stop you moving them and you're gonna feel a lot of resistance. You could give them a little shoulder massage just to help, help relax those muscles. Help, and then when you feel that spasm of pain's gone and you feel the muscles relax, keep the elbow in at the side and move it just very gently. Now this whole process to get right out as far as here could take you anything up to about like 15 minutes or so. Just really slow, really gentle, just talking to them, reassuring them, keeping them calm. Once you're out this far, you'll feel a bit of resistance and you might even feel just a little bit of a click or something as your humeral head is engaging in your shoulder joint. So at that moment, as you've gone out as far as you can, as wide as you can, in one quick movement, you're going to bring the arm across the body and to touch the opposite shoulder. And at that moment, you'll feel this really reassuring clunk as the shoulder goes back in. 
So I will feel, or will you feel it? We'll as both well? feel it. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll both feel it. All right. You can just put that around there. And just slide it in. Yeah. Oh, great. And that's easy. and that's <laughs> that's pretty easy. Nice. Um, if you don't have a yeah. sling, you can just use the harness in a similar way, just through threading it. Just put one loop through this arm or over their shoulder, and then putting that in there, getting them to relax it in there. Yeah. And then again, just tying it off. Oh, at the back. Yeah, one way or another. Exactly. Yeah. Like Even that. like this. Not, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that feels actually quite tight. Okay. I'm just gonna wrap that in. And it keeps it warm, it's great. It keeps you warm. Just tuck it in. Mm -hmm. And then if you cool. want to, you could just check again to say, you know, can you still feel me touching you here? Mm -hmm. Just to make sure you haven't trapped any nerves when you're relocating it. All right, and at this, this stage, it might be a lot easier to go back to civilization if I need to, if the rescue cannot make it, or if not, we're gonna be waiting for rescue, right? Yeah, you'll be a lot more comfortable. So while you're waiting, keep them warm, keep topped up with the painkillers, and maybe just check at that stage. <laughs> Exactly. Sorry. <laughs> uh, just check that they don't have any other injuries or anything else that you've missed, perhaps. Mm -hmm. If you are really stuck and the emergency service is going like, to take a long time and you have to get out and the other method didn't work, okay. you could try this one once. It just requires quite a lot more force and can be slightly more uncomfortable for your casualty. If it's just you and you don't have anyone else to apply counter traction, you get them propped up against a rock or something, it's a bit harder in ski boots. Or against harder. me. Or against you, but you need to be leaning back on something. Okay. And then you get your foot into their armpit and you apply loads of traction. You pull, 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 getting your toe right up in their armpit. And then a slight, you're turning their palm up towards the sky and moving their arm out very gently to the side. And hopefully with that, about 30 degrees. Okay. And hopefully with that, you should just hear it pop back in. Okay. But it's, it requires quite a lot more force, that mechanism, and is a bit more uncomfortable. So uh, what kind of mistake could I be doing if I do something wrong? Like what, what could I do wrong? It's difficult. I think the biggest thing would be to know if it's a fracture or a dislocation. Okay. And sometimes if you're in the outback, you're not going to you're not going to know that. But if you try and put it back and it doesn't work, then just put it in a sling, leave it. It might be that there's a fracture instead. The other big risk could be that you might fracture it whilst trying to put it back. But again, if you do the techniques that I've shown you, that's rare and Again, if, you, if you're in the outback and you need to get out, you need to get that shoulder back in. Okay. So all the complications are rare, but just explain them to the casualty before you put it back and just say, you know, you're happy for me still to have a go at mm -hmm. doing this and we need to get out of here anyway. So we have to give this a try. Cool. Um, one more question. If I'm close to a ski resort or if I know that the rescue is going to come because I've talk, talked to them, I know they're on their way. Uh, is it worth to just leave the victim like this or is it good for me to try anyways? Yeah, I think so. That'll depend. If the rescue services are really close by mm -hmm. and you've not done this a lot, just wait for the rescue services. It might be that your casualty does this to their shoulder regularly and that they're happy for you just to help pop it back in. So okay. every situation is different, but so long as you explain your level of expertise and know how close the rescue services are, mm -hmm. then you can make that judgment call. But every situation is different. Uh, Dr. Lucy, thank you. This is really valuable information. It's the kind of thing which you learn sometimes, but which you need to work on all the time. And I think in the backcountry, it's always really important to be self-sustainable. The more self-sustainable as a team you are, the more you're going to have a reach within your adventures. So thanks for all this medical information. This is gold. Give us some more because we love it. <laughs> all right, be safe out there. Sweet.